Okay, so for experiment two, what we want to do is isolate a pure culture. What that means is that we usually give you a sample that is mixed in there, so there's at least two or more organisms present, mixed up, and we want to separate them out. So ideally, what we would do is plate them, and what we do is thin it out step by step. So for that, we're going to need to pour new plates, just like we've done before, and streak them for isolation. Now, how is that process done is actually kind of interesting. And so there's plenty of videos you can look online. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple of old plates so that we can kind of draw it out and show you how this is done. Reminding you again that we're maintaining a septic technique. We are gonna sterilize our loop every single step and so on and so forth. So now usually what we do is we take our plates and we know which is the top, which is the bottom. Obviously the bottom is the one that contains the actual auger, just like this, right? And that's the one we label. So ideally, you'd write down your name, your, the date, the name of the experiment, and so on and so forth. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But here, what we want to do is kind of learn how to divide it for isolation. So what we do, I'm going to use a Sharpie just kind of to demonstrate it. I'm going to divide this guy into four pieces, just kind of at the edges, just four little pieces, really quick. Nothing extraordinary, just to get some guidelines of what I want to do. And so when you have this plate, what you're going to be doing is taking your loop and streaking back and forth by crossing the lines. In other words, you want to go outside of it, not within it. We're not coloring within the lines. We're going outside of the system. Right? And so what we do is we take our loop with sample on it, with our mixed culture, and then we're going to go from the outside of one side to the outside of the other side. And so what we do is kind of paint it back and forth. So we do it three, four, maybe five times really quickly. So we go one, two, three, four. And that's about it, making sure you cross the lines and go outside. Now, ideally, what you did is you've taken a mixed culture and thinned it out a couple of times. Now, that sample that is there, we're going to rethin it out. We're going to spread it a little bit more. So what we do is rotate it 90 degrees. And then with our loop, we would re-sterilize this guy, 15 seconds, everything else that you've learned so far. And then pick up some of the stuff that is already there and thin that guy out, making it less dense. So I'm going to use the Sharpie to do that also. And again, sterile Sharpie in this case. And we'd go from the outside towards the outside. Again, a few times. One, two, three, four, five, really quick. And then you'd repeat that another time. Same steps, everything else. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then the very last one, as you notice, we're starting to get this pattern. The last one does not cross both. You just kind of pick it up from the last one and fishtail it towards the center. So what we do is pick it up and then just go towards the center, creating this cool little fishtail loop, all right? Now, what you've done successfully is taken a sample that was heavy with both cultures and thinned it out the first time. As we turned it, we thinned it out a little bit more, turned it, thinned it out a little bit more. So little by little, you're making colonies to separate out and have them individualized or isolated. And then in the very last one, you should be able to kind of have individual little dots growing of isolated pure cultures. Now, this is done easily with the Sharpie, obviously, but we really want to be able to do it with this guy. So what we're going to do is using a plate that is already on, we're going to transfer our mixed culture and do this a couple of times as such. You'd open it up and go back and forth outside the lines and close it. Sterilize this guy, turn it 90 degrees, back and forth, close it, sterilize again, 90 degrees, back and forth, sterilize again, and then the very last one is that fishtail. So you open it up, don't do that part, and then just fishtail it towards the center, and you'd be done. So that's kind of the dry run of this. So it pays to kind of get used to your system and where everything's set up. And also it kind of helps out to have your hand kind of sitting on the actual bench instead of suspended. One of the most common mistakes is to have your hand up and then just jabbing the, the actual auger itself and destroying it. So what we want to do is be gentle and kind of go over the surface, kind of like thinning butter, right? So we're going to do it with the one plate that you've prepared. So we have to be very careful with this guy. So in a second, we're going to set it up to do exactly that. I'm going to draw my lines, I'm going to label everything, and we're going to do a live run with the actual flame running back and forth, okay? Okay, so let's make the actual run for experiment number two. 
So I'm gonna read in my inoculum. I'm gonna need a flame ready, so I'm gonna get that guy started. There it is, gonna control it down a little bit, make sure it doesn't get too out of hand. I have my little plate kind of as a reminder of what I'm trying to actually draw out. So it's kind of hard to see over here, but these are my angles. I've already drawn these on the bottom of my plate, so you can see this. And I'm gonna get ready to transfer my solution. So, sterile technique, a septic technique twice. Let it sit there. Move this plate so you can see it a little bit better. I take the mixed culture sample that has the actual uh, two or more. Pinky technique this guy to open it up. Twice. And now I'm just gonna pick up some of that sample. Sterilize this guy again. Pinky technique this guy closed. I'm gonna put this guy away. So now I'm gonna briefly open the actual plate just enough for me to kind of actually get in. And again, crossing the lines without really moving my hand. So one, two, three, four, five, and then that's it. Gently on top of the surface. And I'm gonna kill this guy, sterilize it. Make sure again, penetrating the actual inner cone. Sterile. Now what I did is took the sample that was mixed from here onto my loop and then went back and forth crossing that line. So I kind of thinned it out. Now I'm gonna turn this 90 degrees so I can pick up some of the stuff that I already have here left and thin it out again. So just for good measure, I'm gonna get this guy out here, give him my 15 seconds, and same idea. Barely open this bad boy up and then thin it out. You'll again notice that my hand is not suspended. It's just kind of sitting down nice on the bench. And then all I'm doing is moving my fingers, not my hand not back and forth, not at an angle to stab it, just sitting down nice and calm. So then ideally, I shouldn't have been moving this, so I'm gonna sterilize this guy really quick. Give it there, and we'll give this guy a try. So give it 15 seconds. And now gently, same idea. Kind of do this slightly open, and then Thin it out. Done. Sterilize this guy, and we're going to do this one more time. I'm going to give this 15 seconds one more time. Turn this guy 90 degrees. 15 seconds done. And then back and forth. That's my third time of doing that guy. And then the final one, after I turn it 90 degrees, is one fishtail, just picking up some from the side and then going towards the center. So here, pick it up from the side and then go towards the center. I'm done, that's it. Sterilize this guy to make sure everything's clean. And we've now sterilized, uh, isolated our plate here. So went once, twice, three times, and then gone towards the center. Exactly like we tried to do with this guy. So what I'm gonna do next, is going to show one really up close so you can see the pattern and then that'll be the end for a uh, streaking for isolation so let's take a look at this a little bit closer so you can see the pattern i show you that i already have my four corners labeled and in this case i actually wrote them as one two three and four just so i can have an idea of where my corners are i made sure i wrote them backwards so i know exactly what direction i'm turning but ideally this is what you're doing hand nice and stable on on the bench, what you would do is briefly open your plate. I'm gonna open it up a little bit more so you can see it. And again, from outside to outside, just go back and forth. And then you'd sterilize it. I'm skipping those steps, obviously. You turn this guy 90 degrees. I'm gonna pick up some of the stuff we left on this side and again, back and forth. Sterilize and everything. You do it one more time. Sterilize and everything. And then that final one, you'd open it up and just pick up some from the side and then go from the center over here. And that's it. Then you'd sterilize everything there's on the center. That's pretty much the streaking for isolation part. So, seeing it from the other angle, technically backwards, 
right? You'd start from one side, go back and forth. You'd turn in 90 degrees, go back and forth. Right? You picked up some of this stuff and then re-streaked it out. You thinned it out. Turn it on another 90 degrees and then thin that guy. So you thin this guy over there. And then that final one, you pick up some of this leftover over here and then just put it towards the center. So you're going once, twice, three times, and then towards the center. That's your streaking in isolation, making sure that at every step you are aseptically sterilizing your inoculum so you don't carry any more sample. The idea is the first time you apply stuff, it's nice and heavy. Then by sterilizing this guy, you just pick up a little bit of the stuff that is here and then thin that out. When you turn it, you sterilize this guy again and then thin some of that out and so on and so forth until you can get the thinnest version that's gonna go toward the center. That's the plan.